What's up guys, Hamspoo Gaming here with a new video and welcome to yet another episode of Unusual Specs. This episode we're gonna try out the Poison Rogue or the Spell Power Rogue or whatever you want to call it. Basically this rogue or this spec is all focused on nature damage, that's right, poisons. So we're gonna have to focus on things such as spell power, spell hit and spell crit. And I know that sounds very weird for a rogue, but that's just the thing. It is an unusual spec and we're going to try it out. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do obviously is show you guys the talents. Then I'm going to show you guys the rotation because the rotation does require a bit of preparation in terms of uh, macros and a bit of uh, getting used to. And after that I will once again uh, do a normal dungeon. Then I will get a, a DPS reading from this character and then I will once again switch on to Smaller Forge, get a tier 5 character there, and see what kind of DPS I can do with that character. So without further ado, let's uh, let's discuss the talents. So this is a very weird spec, it's a combination between assassination and combat, 60, uh, 30, 31, 0. And I'm going to start up with the assassination tree first. So first we're going to go and put 5 points in Malice, 2 points in Murder, 3 points in Ruthlessness, one point in Relentless Strikes, four points in Lethality, five points in Improved Poisons, five points in Vile Poisons, one point in Cold Blood, two points in Quick Recovery, and two points in Master Poisoner. Moving on to the Combat Tree, I'm going to go ahead and put five points in Lightning Reflexes, five points in Precision, four points in Deflection, three points in Improved Slice and Dice, 5 points in dual wield specialization, 5 points in sword specialization, 1 point in blade fury, 2 points in weapon expertise, and 1 point in adrenaline rush. And that's pretty much the spec. So um, without further ado, um, I'm going to go ahead and go to a target dummy, and I'll show you guys there what the rotation is, and what you need to do, and what kind of gear you need to get, and etc etc so without further ado let's uh, find a target dummy and let's get started all right we're here at the target dummy so in terms of gear it is quite obvious that you need to get spell power gear now obviously for a rogue it's a little bit harder to get your hands on that kind of stuff but as you can see my rogue here is covered in nothing but green items so let me just uh, give you guys a recommendation on gear you can get for this rogue so first of all the full nether reef set is a really great starter set. Um, you can put uh, six items on there, it's either the chest or the rope and everything else. It, it offers you spell damage and a bunch of stamina which is really great. Other than that I, requ I recommend the Ancient Crystal Talisman and the Ashogun Relic because they both have um, a spell power bonus and increased spell power once you activate them. Band of Dominion, random auction out blue as well as Amulet of Unstable Power. Um, other than that, just a few other greeny signals, the Violet Tower. This one I got from Tempest Touch from uh, Caverns of Time. And a few Nature's Wrath items. Now the Nature's Wrath items are most important because as you can see, this is level 69, it's a green, it's Nature's Wrath. But look at that, 78 nature damage. You always have to look out uh, on the auction house for this type of gear, because this high level Green gear of the Nature's Wrath is really great. That's what you aim for, and it's a lot of damage, as well as my cloak, which has 40 nature damage. Um, in terms of weapons, the best weapons you can get are swords with spell power, because as, as you, um, as you might have noticed in the talents, we have sword specialization, and that gives me 5% chance to get an extra attack on the same target. And that basically means an extra attack, means an extra chance to get poison up. Uh, right now I am rolling with daggers because I haven't been able to get um, swords yet and as you can see this character is still kind of ghetto. But uh, it's great, it's great. It's, it's just uh, me showing you a character that you can basically make in like less than an hour with a bunch of greens and uh, see if that actually works. Uh, so for daggers I have the Warp Dagger of the Elder. This is a level 70 green bites and equip dagger with 95 spell damage, not too bad. Then I have um, another dagger, which is uh, just a random offhand dagger. This doesn't really matter um, as long as the speed is quite slow or as quite fast, actually. So 1.3 is the most, uh, is, is the best speed, 
because you don't you want that you want uh, weapons that are fast as fast as possible that way um, you have um, a bigger chance of getting poisons up more often because you know you hit the target more and as an offhand I have this one right here really crappy crystal blade of the dry which is a sword and it has 1.6 speed and we're basically gonna need one main hand and two offhands now what we're gonna do is we are going to have two poisons we're gonna use two poisons basically instant poison and deadly poison alright so first you're gonna put instant poison on your main hand like so and you're gonna put deadly poison on your second or your first offhand and you're gonna put another instant poison on your first or second offhand so one offhand with deadly poison and one offhand with instant poison now why is that? Because our main, uh, that it, it is like that because our main attack is Shiv. And Shiv basically instantly applies the poison on your offhand. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna attack the dummy and then stack deadly poison five times. Now once we've done that, we wanna switch to another, another offhand that has instant poison. So we can um, hit the target with instant poison while the dot of deadly poison is active. So that's uh, basically rotation. And there's a few macros you can use, and I'm gonna open my macro screen. So the first one is actually it's basically just equipping the dagger and using Shiv, and then another one equipping the other dagger and also using Shiv. So basically, what you're gonna do is you're gonna uh, decide. So I have, let's see, I have this dagger which has deadly poison. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a macro. Equip slot 17. That is the offhand. And then the name of the dagger. This is your Arachnid Dagger, so Arachnid Dagger, and then slash cast Shiv. So what that does... Bam. It equips the dagger, and it casts Shiv. I'll uh, show you guys if I equip the offhand. And now if I use the Magro, bam, it instantly... Um, it instantly equips the dagger, and it casts Shiv. So when I have to switch between my offhand that has instant poison and my offhand that has deadly poison, I can do that right away. And obviously you want to also have another macro which uh, switches to your offhand with instant poison and then cast Shiv. So what we're going to do is basically have... Um, we're going to start off with the offhand with deadly poison. I'm going to just keep on spamming Shiv until we have that five times. There we go. Then I'm going to press 3, which will switch to my... Crystal Blade of the Dryna with Instant Poison. We're just gonna spam that. Now once it's about to run out, bam, I switch back to my offhand with the dagger, with the deadly poison. And then I switch back to my instant poison. Keep on spamming instant poison. It's almost starting to run out. Bam, back to my deadly poison. And then immediately switch back to instant poison. That is what you're gonna do. That is the basic rotation of the poison rogue. So you so once again you're gonna have to have one off a uh, one main hand with de with instant poison, one uh, one off hand with instant poison and one off hand with deadly poison. Um, so um, let me show you guys the full rotation. So that was pretty much the pretty much the whole rotation but there's a few extra things you can do. So first off obviously gotta hit stealth. Let me just uh, grab a target that has no combo points. So I'm going to start off with Garrett's, because Cheap Shot is not really in that interesting, and since we have no attack power, um, Ambush is not really that helpful either, so we're going to start off with Garrett's. Once again, stacking up those Deadly Poisons, just keep on stacking them. There we go, and then switch to my Instant Poison. Now I have 5 combo points, we're going to use that for Slice and Dice. We're going to, have, we're going to keep up Slice and Dice all the time, because Slice and Dice... Uh, Gives us more haste. More haste means more chance the poisons will stack. Alright, I'm gonna spam instant poison. Instant poison, keep an eye out for my energy so when this runs out, bam, instantly back to my deadly and instantly back to my instant. Got five combo points again, slice and dice. And spam with instant. And spam with instant. That's about to run out, bam. And that is your rotation. Now, obviously, if you wanna go burst, I'm going to activate your burst. Let me just uh, wait until I have a full rota rotation up again. Bam. Alright. Adrenaline Rush. Blade Fury. I'm going to use my spell power trinkets. And there we go. I'm just going to spam. 
instant poison, refresh my slice and dice, deadly, and instant poison, and instant poison. Lots of instant poison. As you can see, my DPS is going up very high right now, 700 DPS. And switch back to my deadly, and switch back to instant. So that is the rotation, and that's all you need to know. Keep up deadly poison, five stacks, and between those, uh, between that, use instant poison, and keep up slice and dice, use the combo points for slice and dice, and whenever uh, Adrenaline Rush and Blade Fury is ready, use that. And you can also make a macro to activate both spell power trinkets. So that is the rotation right there. And as you can see, I managed to pull off 700 DPS with that. Can you imagine? And that is only with a bunch of greens. Keep that in mind. Only with a bunch of greens. Look, there's pretty crappy gear. So that is the rotation. Those are the talents. Uh, I think it's time to join a normal dungeon to see what we can do. So without further ado, let's look for a dungeon and kick some ass. Alright guys, and that was the Spell Power Rogue for you. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and it's time to come to a verdict. It's too bad that I couldn't uh, do some DPS readings, readings on the Smolder Fortress server, but apparently Spell Power there does not stack with nature damage from the poisons as it should be. So I hope they fix that soon, and I, 
and uh, maybe I uh, can do a, a DPS reading on Small the Fortune in the near future. However, uh, as of right now, we'll have to come to a verdict and discuss the pros and the cons of the spec. And as always, let's start off with the pros. So the first pro is the fact that I'm doing great DPS. Um, I'm not sure how this turns out in terms of epic gear or tier five gear, because as you saw, as you saw, I was not able to test it on Small of Fort, so I have no idea. I personally have no idea how it is or what it is like when you have some uh, pretty cool epics and over 1k spell power. However, with the gear I have, and keep in mind, I just have a bunch of netherweave and a bunch of greens. I was doing 700 DPS on the um, on the target dummies, and about 570 DPS during Cavern of Time during the last boss. That was only because the bosses died very fast. So I think in a long fight, I'm able to keep up a, seven, a steady 700 DPS, which is amazing for a rogue with a bunch of greens. So it is really great for low-geared rogues. And that's definitely a pro. Um, the second pro, obviously, it's something different. So it's a very fun rotation. I, I love this rotation. It's completely different than anything I've ever seen. And it definitely keeps you a lot more interested compared to, let's say, the standard rogue specs, which is PvE combat. So um, those are definitely some great pros. And obviously, there are also some cons to this spec. The first one is probably the most obvious one. The fact that, you, the fact that it's harder to gear up. I mean... You now have to look for items with spell power, so you cannot you cannot benefit from tier four or tier five gear because that all it has is agility, stamina, and attack power, and all that stuff. So you have to look for these random spell power items that drop off of trash mob or bosses, and it's just harder to gear up because you can't benefit from your tier sets. Um, another one is a less survivability because, as I just explained, uh, using those nature's wrath uh, items are great. However, they do not have any stamina, and no agility means you have less armor, and that just means you're you're a lot more squishy when it comes to playing a spell power rogue because uh, you will also go for cloth items, and cloth items obviously have less armor, so you will definitely be a bit more squishy squishy than the average rogue. Um, and the last con is probably also uh, it's a decent one. And that is the fact that it's, it takes time to get the uh, rotation up. I mean, you first have to spam yourself all the way to five stacks of deadly poisons. And from there on out, you'll start doing de decent DPS. So I, I, I don't know if you saw this in the Caverns of Time, but during trash mobs, which die pretty fast, I was not able to do the five stacks of deadly poison. It just takes too long to get that stuff up. Which means I'm not doing great in DPS. You saw me do like three to 400 DPS because it just takes too long to get that rotation up. However, if it does get up, then you'll start doing great DPS. It just, it just takes some time to get that rotation up, which is definitely a con when you're doing short fights or trash mobs or something like that. All right. Um, oh, one more thing I'd like to add though. I uh, Obviously I could not test this spec out with, with like tier 5 gear or 1k spell power but I went to, I went to the forums I saw a, um, a thread there on the, sp on the spell power rogue and I saw a bunch of posts of people saying they have about 800 nature damage and they were doing around 800 1100 spell um, DPS in heroics so there's definitely a lot of potential here for the spec it's it's amazing in my opinion <laughs> I can't believe it works but hey 700 DPS this kind of gear and apparently when you have about 800 nature damage you'll be doing 800 to 1100 dps in heroics that is amazing that is pretty much insane so it's time to come to a verdict do i like this spec oh yeah definitely i love this spec is it viable for pve yes yes it is as long as it's not very short fights and as long as they're not very short you will be doing great DPS. You will be doing great DPS with a bunch of greens. You will be doing great DPS with a bunch of blues and further, further on the down the line with a bunch of epics and tier five or gear that's on par with tier five. So it's a great spec. I definitely recommend you guys try it out. And uh, oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot to do this at the beginning of the video, so I'll do it right now. Big, big shout out to Pedo Pete. Yes, that is his actual name on the forums. He made an entire guide on how to spec, play, etc, etc, 
as a spell power rogue. So if you want to, if you guys want to get some more detailed information regarding this spec, I I recommend you guys check that out. It's a great guide. I've learned a lot of that. I've, I learned a lot from that guide. So check that out if you want to learn more about the spell power rogue. All right, guys, this is the spell power rogue. That's all I have to show you. And my character's going AFK. I'll just jump. There we go. Um, that's all I have to show you guys. I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll be back with probably another episode pretty soon. But until then, I'm Hamsu Gaming, and have a good one.